Sometimes you just have to morph. As I opened my YouTube feed this morning, I saw that uh, Lazy Clint over at LGR had posted a video about the Animorphs series and the software and hardware that they used to create the covers on the Animorph book covers. He even morphed himself into a cat. Neat! Now, speaking of morphing cats, there's this new game coming out uh, by a company called Morph Cat Games. This is a German company that creates NES games. Now, I know what you're thinking. There's tons of homebrews and stuff out there and ROM hacks for NES games, but this is not it. This is uh, com something completely different, and from the ground up, it's built to be a completely amazing game. The game they're working on is called Micromages, and the Kickstarter was successfully funded. Now, this game isn't released yet, but you can pre-order it, and it's about $10. It looks really impressive, and they use a lot of neat tricks to get the most out of a 40k cartridge. It even has four-player support, and it's truly impressive. However, it's not out yet, so I won't be reviewing this game yet. However, Morphcat created an, an earlier game back in 2011. This game is called Super Bat Puncher. The code, design, and sound effects were by Julius Reiki, and music was by Dave Harris. Now, Super Bat Puncher is not complete yet, but there is a playable demo. And boy, is it playable. So let me start off with the story. In 21XX, Earth is invaded by explosive space bats. All major cities were destroyed, and people began to move underground. After years of research, scientists located the Plague Source, a small planet in the outer regions of a distant solar system. To combat the threat, the Bat Excommunication and Extradition Force was created. After a year of space travel, Captain Roast of Beef arrives at Planet Bat. That's quite the story. I love when developers put a little bit of uh, effort into a story, even if it's just a cheesy one like this. And uh, all I have to say is that if you've played some of the games that I've made, I'm also a fan of this uh, kind of making puns with the names and things. Now this is a horizontally and vertically smooth scrolling platformer. Use a giant punching glove to punch bats and jump around to avoid obstacles. The graphics are pretty well drawn and have a lot of character to them. And Captain Roast is a very likable character. I can't say the same about his little sidekick, Sirloin, though. He's kind of annoying. Animations are smooth and also pretty great. The music isn't too complicated, but is very fitting to the gameplay. As this is only a demo, there are only two levels. However, each level adds new features and power-ups. For example, you get the bowling ball power-up to form into a Metroid-like ball and get through some obstacles. Other times, you get to punch the wall and push off to get a speed boost. There is a two-player option where another player can control Sirloin, and I didn't try this out because I had no one else to play with. But from the videos I've seen online, Sirloin, the bird, just kind of flies around dropping little turds on his enemies. Now this uh, is a perfect weapon for a bird, and it's what the NES sorely needs, some two-player co-op fun. Very few platformers that I can think of offered this kind of two-player action back in the day. Each of the two demo levels ends with a boss battle, one with some bats that swoop down and are kind of easy to guess their pattern and destroy them, and another one with pink bunnies of death. There. What, behind the rabbit? It is the rabbit. <laughs> Now, me being me, I of course had to run this on an MS-DOS computer, because I can. Here it is running on my IBM Aptiva 486. The emulator I chose was of course Nesticle, which is an amazing emulator. I used to play all sorts of NES games in the 90s on Nesticle, and since I didn't have an NES growing up, for me, it was a first time experience in many of them. To me, NES games just feel right playing on a Model M keyboard.
Now you might not have seen my older video where I take NES games and put a CGA palette to them or an EGA palette. So let me do that to this game here. Now as you can see, it actually looks pretty good. So CGA, it looks pretty good. EGA, it looks pretty good too. So anyone that says the EGA and CGA palettes just are terrible to work with and they're ugly and they're never good, they just frankly don't know what they're talking about. Anyway, I really hope that Morphcat has success with Micromages because I really want them to finish that game so I can go back and revisit Super Bat Puncher and finish this game. It's really good and I really want to play the whole thing. And I probably will be playing Micromages when it comes out, so look for a review in the future on that. So if you haven't yet, please subscribe so you can catch my next videos. I plan on making one every Friday. Sometimes I'll make them on Wednesday or Monday depending on my schedule and stuff. But uh, please, please subscribe. And don't forget to hit that like, comment, and uh, see you next video. Hey, Angus, what'd you think of that review? <laughs>